Hmm. There we go. Better. Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Runified. This is part two of my world tour. And to start off, we're going to be showing off this little beauty I made. It's a barn, obviously. Maybe not so obvious, but hopefully it is. And here we go. This is this is it. This is where the magic happens. This is where we keep the cows and the sheep and the little piggies. Not that there are any, but there will be eventually a bunch of them like right in here wink wink yeah anyway so this is it kind of more of a, a building a building project for me uh, not so much function is what I generally go for but did a more of a building project to s see what kind of patterns and uh, shapes I could make it for a barn and see how it come put a little little hayloft up here and a way to get up and down um... just some storage over here, this is just some I just put the dirt and stuff in there. just a bunch of random things but the animals will go in here and that's about it, I put uh... kind of a little hatch here it goes down into the cellar, I mean also once again wanted a visual appearance so I made it look like there was foundations and it continues on here I was gonna I was actually going to do something a little bit evil. I was going to have some sort of hidden slaughterhouse underneath where I actually got my food and, like, my steak. And then you have, like, the regular animals up above. And then there's, a like, down below there would be, like, quartz rooms, so, like, whitewashed and have, like, cows come through on, like, mine carts. And kind of a little bit, little bit evil, but once again, more, more design than anything. And then uh, coming out here, you can see the potion room. Now, this is what the other side of it looks like. This is what the wall looks like. Uh, once again, it's not finished, so there's no roof on it. But just going back, this is also just my, my sheep farm. It's perfect. Engineered beautifully. And um, this was totally my design. Didn't happen by a creeper explosion whatsoever. You know, I can't say I remember this being here. Let's go check it out. Du, 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 du. No way! There's been a spawner under here the whole time. Is there any... Oh my god. Oh my gosh! That's awesome! I did not know this was here. Oh, that's kind of weird. I guess somebody came through here and never took any of the... Even iron? That's very odd. I wonder what they were doing. Is it all lit up? No. Huh. That's cool. Alright, let's uh, let's go back to the potion room. Alright, so we're a few minutes later here. It's getting dark. And uh, I'm just going to pop over here to the potion room and show you how that goes. And I'll be with you guys in a second. Alright, so we're back here. At the entrance, dun dun dun. It's not finished, but I don't care. So here we go. This is the potion room, our automatic brewing station, or whatever you'd like to call it. I don't have a name for it. Uh, here's the entrance. These are going to be big windows and a shorter roof that goes up to a higher roof, which then slopes down to the back, was kind of the idea. You know, kind of one of those industrial looking roofs where it slopes just slightly in order to collect rain and all that stuff. Yeah, so uh, here is the timing. Um, this is the, I believe, I think I might have buggered something up underneath there. Anyways, this generally when it's working is a timer and basically what happens is this is a shorter timer and this is a longer timer and the long timer is the perfect amount of time it takes to brew a potion and once the potion's done this timer activates and it's the perfect amount of time to move the potions to the next brewing stand and allow new potions to go into the old brewing stand so that allows for a smooth transition and um, a, a absolutely no loss in time for brewing so this is as efficient as it can get as far as I know um, I can show you guys uh, I don't think I'll show the timing because it's it's fairly basic. Just a bunch of items. I think there's sixty something and only like five high 
five items in this one. Uh, anyways, so this is the master control for that, which works normally. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I actually might go check that out. I'll be right back. I'm going to double check that. Alright, I fixed it. There was some bug update, or um, some block update glitch. So that's kind of how it works. Is It uh, turns this signal on and off. So that signal goes on underneath into the circuitry and in further, but I'll show you guys that later. Um, but what happens here is kind of a control uh, system is this is the master control on and off and furthermore these are to turn off the five turn off or on the five pairs of brewing stands uh, and you can see them right here there's a minecart for each section and they bring the potions they're non-existent right now because I hadn't put the ingredients in yet but um, in order to start up the machine you come over here and you put in the um, the water bottles and there's a trick over an alignment trick over here it uses two ender chests and it aligns the water bottles against um, both blocks so it gets the speed of the ice as well as it's picked up by the hoppers so by this way I can quickly fill up all ten individual brewing lines uh, by standing in one spot so that's pretty handy. So that's that's all you do to refill that there. And then in order to refill each section, you can come over back here. And here's where everything happens. This is seeming very seemingly very complicated. It is in its own way. It's uh, quite compact for the version of brewing that I'm doing. But basically what happens is here are the ingredients chest. It goes netherwort potion ingredients such as water breathing, so it'll be the puffer fish, and then whatever effect I'd like, like um, either splash or, well, not in water breathing sense, because you can't, don't have um, an element increase when it gets better. I can't remember what the word is. Or time extension, so in this case you would throw in some glowstone dust in here as well, and you would end up with extended water breathing potions at the end, and it would go in here, and then over here, every once in a while, you'd come pick them up, should you like. I think it's that button. I have two of them. That one's just for show. Yeah, and then you pick up your water breathing potions. And uh, I'm going to show you guys some of the guts underneath in just a second. So here we are down in the guts of the laboratory. And as you can see, it looks like quite the maze of redstone, and it is to a certain extent, but... Um, really what I'm, all I'm doing here is repeating the same pattern and it's this kind of section um, that I'm repeating over and over again uh, well five times to be exact um, nothing super complicated about it it's more about the compactness of what I've done but to show you guys where the redstone starts is up here you can see um, right over here is the that's the master control it, it powers that so it uh, can't activate the rest of the brewing stations, but once it goes through here, what controls it next is these. So under above these lamps were those levers, and that can each um, lamp controls a section, or rather a pair of brewing stands. And this goes down the line, activates this line, and powers this line. So if this line is powered, then the master line can't unpower the line and subsequently activate all of this contraption. So basically what it does when it does activate the contraption is it unpowers the hopper below, allows for three new potions come in at the same time that the old ones are going out. Uh, it then activates um, all four of these hoppers four times in a row. and those go all the way up and come back down into this chest where then they go into this brewing stand and the process starts once again. Um, so that goes through all the way down to the end of the line where at the end it's transferred all the way up here into that chest which is a, a, a backfill chest and goes into the hopper and then the minecart and that's what I called earlier where it would send into the front of the line where I can pick them up. And that's kind of the the idea of it. Here 
I've got the lines coming underneath of that block there, all the way down here, and that's to call the minecart. Goes underneath all of the contraptions and back up. It's not the most direct way, but it's the way that I could find it fit the best in order not to disturb the rest of the build. But uh, so that's that's how the redstone works. Here you can see I actually have a couple water bottles in here. I was throwing them in just to test it out, see if it worked, and it indeed does. So yeah, that took a while to design, and that's uh, that's the gist of it. I believe I can get out here. Yep. It's a little little messy still, but that's okay. And just over here, I got just a little bit more to show. Not much, really. Uh, I was going to put kind of a little ingredient storage place down here, uh, through the nether portal, kind of a, to combine it. You are very loud. I wish you could throw axes. That would be fantastic. But you can't. Anyway, so you go through the portal, and, and behind it, there would be nether wart and storage off to the left here. Oh, no, this is the right. Um, you'd have storage off to the right against this wall, and you'd be able to access and jump over here and walk over the different lines and check them out and refill the ingredients as you wish. Probably I was going to eventually put a single wide walkway all the way down, but I haven't gotten around to that. But that's how the laboratory works. There it is, guys. Uh, so that's that's it. That's the laboratory. Um, there you go. You can hear the clicking in the background. I turned them all on just to show you guys. It'll activate all of these droppers at once using the two torches. So there we go. That's that's the laboratory, the potion room, the brewing station, whichever you'd like to call it. Uh, I don't have a, an official name for it, but call it whichever you'd like. Uh, so that's it. So I'm going to wrap this up with a couple more things, um, mainly this little guy over there and a couple more things over there. And I think we're almost done, though, so I'm going to go gear up since I died, as you might have... If you saw my last episode, you'd see that I'm missing some expensive items that I do not have right now. <laughs> no armor or anything. So I'm going to go gear up and just get my stuff back together, and I'll be right back. So I don't have a ton to show here. It's a, just a little decoration project of mine. I decided to put a, a log camp. So I'm put a little put a little hut in here with some storage for my wood and just some logs lying around, roughed up the grass a little bit. I uh, made a little station in here for growing dark oak trees. And over here, generally when I think of like a logging camp, uh, like a long term one, uh you have like a forester's tower so you can spot the trees that need to be cut down. So th this one's a little stumpy. I didn't, uh, I should have made it a little bit taller. But there's a little, little lookout just to look around. So there you go. Oh, let's, let's see if I can see my, we'll put this up so I can see my, my tower from here. Should be right there. Load. I command thee, load thy chunks. Please. Pretty please? Maybe? No? Well, that's okay. Anyways, so I think uh, I think that concludes our our world tour here. Next episode, we're gonna get straight into that LP. And um, for now, I'm not certain if it's gonna be a server LP or a single player LP. But hopefully, you guys are looking forward to that. That'll be out, be out within the next couple of days. But until then, toodles, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.